I'm Paul Probst from Jordy Canid, and this video is about um, the blind site, what it is, how it works, which means you have to talk a little bit about echolocation, and um, basically, you know, how you get it and apply it. And we're going to make this very short. This is a topical one for people who are sort of interested. So, um, first thing is, uh, I'm going to show you uh, this preparatory to us discussing hearing, because there's no echolocation without hearing. Um, this little gizzy here is the top view of a dog's head, ear, ear. It's just the way we draw it here when we're talking about this stuff. Here are two targets, one near, uh, one a little farther, and one dead head, and one off at an angle. So here basically is what you get for echolocation, all right? If the unit dog is wearing a blind sight, right, you're getting sound waves are going out like this, all right? And off of these targets, they're bouncing off like this. I hope that's not too hard to understand. I know it's a lot of lines on the board at one time, but, but, uh, but that's what you, what you get. Now, the reason I say this is I want you to see what is easily apparent about echolocation. If you're looking from the top down, okay, the distance from uh, here to here is longer than the distance from, or is shorter than the distance from here to here, all right? Now, the dog can hear those differences. So, the first thing you get is range. Does this show up well enough? Yes. Okay, so you get range, all right? Also, animal has two ears, right? So what's readily as apparent is you're going to get direction. I mean, it's, it'll be stronger at one ear, it'll be or weaker at the other ear, that kind of thing. So that tells you something about direction. So we get direction or heading is the way the, uh, the uh, radar and sonar boys do it. So this should be all you get if you have two ears and you hear a reflection back. But it doesn't work that way, okay? I'm going to show you something about hearing in general. If you look at this, this would make sense. You would get direction. I mean, you would get range out there somewhere, and you would get direction where it is. Actually, you get a lot more than that. I'm going to explain that right now. <clears throat> okay. Now, we said we get uh, direction or heading, and we get distance. Okay. Should be... All you get, really, if you th kind of think about it, right? Because you just got the two ears. But there's a lot more to it than that. Now, I'm going to talk to you about this in terms of your own experiences. How do you hear? Because that's going to tell you a lot about how dogs hear, horses hear, everything. Uh, here's an example that I use a lot. When I was a kid, my parents would drive somewhere in the car in the summer. Back then, their cars weren't air conditioned. I'd be laying in the back seat. And every time we went by uh, through a viaduct or um, by a, a guardrail, you know, that type of thing, you know, I'd be laying there in the seat and I'd hear a guardrail at my feet, guardrail at my head. I'd feel that boxed in sound you get as you're going through a tunnel or a viaduct or something, right? Well, why do you know, why does the sound boxed in? It sounds close, right? And why would I know that something was at my feet or head? I got two ears going sideways. Should I be able to see that? Or, or know about that? Well, yes, because hearing is a lot more complex. You can get elevation, right, from your hearing, and you can sometimes hear when something is big, all right? And animals who do echolocation can get even more. They can get texture. So they can, for instance, tell the difference from a surface that's like um, cloth, right? All these threads going this way, this way, this way or a surface that has big holes in it, or little holes in it. They can actually hear a difference. Animals that echolocate get that much. Um, people, I don't know if even Daniel, when it comes to people echolocating, I don't even know if Daniel Kish, who's the guy most people are familiar with, who does echo, the blind guy who does echolocation. Um, so, we have to take another little look at, at, at echolocation. All right? Now, I'm not going to get into tremendous detail. You're, you have pretty much what you what you need to know. So, so you can get more information, all right? 
Uh, I'm going to make another quick drawing. Okay, for the blind site, to get a leg up, to not spend 10 years researching this thing, we decided to use some natural echolocation as a model. And what you may or may not know, uh, they used to think that the only animals that did echolocation were insects, bats, right? Uh, there are a couple exceptions to this, and cetaceans, which includes dolphins, whales, etc., etc. Here's our friend, the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. Now, the reason I drew him up here, and I don't draw very well, which is the obvious, is because this is the model we use for the blind sight, the way he does it. Um, now, I'm going to show you. The, the Atlantic bottleneck dolphin has a thing up in its head right up here. This, this isn't skull. This piece right here. This is fat. It's a big fat, and it's not the brain. The brain is kind of fatty, too. But it's this big lump of fat they have up here. They make the sounds back about in here, right? They go, they get radiated up to here. This thing actually focuses it. It acts as like a lens so that they can put out a very narrow beam or a wider beam, and they can even control where that goes. Now, let me tell you how good this sonar is. An Atlantic bottleneck dolphin can turn itself up on its nose so it's facing straight down, and it can look at the sea bottom and let's just to see, say, if the sea, in coastal areas where the sea bottom is either mud or sand or small rocks, and it's kind of loose because the tides move about, an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin can can the bottlenose dolphin can set itself on its nose, can look up to eight inches down in there and see a fish that's actually under there. That's how good their sonar is. So this is the model we started to take. Now. Um, You'll hear a click from uh, like our horse units and the stuff at lower frequency, you hear a click, but it isn't more than that. A click would be like a single pulse. Boom, that's it, all right? The Atlantic bottleneck, the bottlenose dol uh, dolphin, and uh, by the way, a couple other creatures that we're interested in, make a complex pulse that is more like this. It's in two or more parts. Oh, ours is usually three. Um, now, what they get from this, from doing this, this weird pulse they put out, is they get, okay, we're gonna say distance. Can you see this? Okay, heading, or direction. Ele azimuth or elevation, I'm gonna put elevation here. All right, size, in other words, how big is an object? and texture, believe it or not. And yet, the dolphin has two ears just like us. And the dog, and the horse, and a bunch of other animals. So, how do they get that out of this pulse? It's these little things here, the complex pulse. The complex pulse comes back distorted. In other words, relative to this big pulse, the heights of these pulses will change, what's called the timing, the phase will change, and that depends on the materials that hit and everything, and that's what gives you all of these other things. Now, you can do some of it. If you can hear something at your feet or overhead, you're doing some of this already. And humans are not particularly good at this. So I emphasize that because if humans can do that much, can you get that elevation data, imagine what an animal adapted for this can do. They can get just a tremendous amount of information. They're probably getting information that we don't even know about. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't use it. Okay, so what is the blind site? First, physically, I'm going to show you. This is the first one. This was the original one developed for large dogs to help service dogs stay in service. Okay, because not these days, not all service dogs are large. But th this is it here. This is where the pulse comes out. This is the, how it hangs. Okay, this is the small one. To cram everything in here, we had to make the opening for the sound a little bit off center. But this is the small one. This weighs one pound. This weighs 5.7 ounces. Um, let's see. This is uh, this is the horse one. Uh, normally, actually, it goes like this. That's the front of the horse that way. Let's see if we get this up. This is the front of the horse here. Um, whoops. <laughs> I got it upside down. Yeah. This goes on a horse's halter. This goes on what's called a connecting strap. This goes on what's called on the throat latch. But basically, it hangs like this at an angle like that beneath the horse's uh, throat. And the sound comes out 
at a 45 degree angle following your horse's eyes. Okay, so this is a little bit different than the dog ones. Okay, now what do they do and what is it? The blind sights are simply sonar transmitters. Um, what they do is transmit um, this kind of fancy pulse that we were talking about. This idealized, this is an idealized pulse, okay? It's never, in the real world, it's never really good, you know? It's like you don't reproduce sound without a little distortion sometimes. But, uh, this, is a son this is a sonar pulse. It's a very specific one. It is made to work in air, not underwater, okay? And this works for both horses and dogs, although it's at different frequencies, okay? Um, uh, dogs uh, uh, use ultrasound because they hear better up there than they do the kind of sound we hear. Horses have hearing comparable to people, so horses, uh, you can actually hear their unit. It gives, in fact, it, thank God horses live outdoors because it gives a very obnoxious click if you had to be indoors with it very much. Uh, so, it's a sonar transmitter. Boom. This is what you get. I'm going to show you what else comes with it. Uh, it puts out this pulse. This box right here will do like a year on a battery. Um, uh, sold this. They may be a little less now. Since we've increased the pulse rate, we haven't had a long enough time to actually test. Uh, actually, letting it, we, you know, we have to accelerate a battery test. We haven't been able to let, let one actually run for a year since we made that change. So, but we're talking a, a year or maybe more for a um, for battery life for these, uh, and uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for the horse unit as well. This one's louder because horses live outside, so it's much louder. And so the um, uh, it has uh, two large nine volt batteries, and, and, and we recommend that use out we use uh, lithium if you're anywhere it goes below four degrees uh, below zero. You want to use you want to use lithium batteries. Anyway, so what comes with them? Uh, the horse unit comes with that, comes with, with uh, only with uh, a parts package that looks like this with spare parts. All right? This, in fact, is the one that goes with the B unit. What you get, you get this, you get this. It'll be mounted on a harness. All right, you can see it on the wall. So it'll be mounted on a harness when you get it. Here is a harness. Uh, you're going to get the parts kit. This mounted on a harness and some instructions and, and that type of thing. Um, uh, here's a smaller harness. That's what you get with this. And let's see, this one's parts pack. This is the parts pack that goes with this one. This one has a hex key because these screws are special. All of, on all of this stuff, all the external hardware, boom, boom, boom. All stainless steel. The box itself is Zamac, okay? Uh, and that's because all of these are expected to last 10 years or more. Now, the transducers in here might not. That's why over the life of the unit, we'll give you one free transducer. We'll replace it for nothing. Uh, but, but basically, the, other than that, and that's because that's as good a transducer as we can get. Um, the, uh, other than that, the units are expected to last uh, uh, 10 years plus. So what we have is we have a sonar transmitter. And... Uh, uh, what, the, what this transmitter does, it sends pulses out this way for the horses, straight ahead for the dogs, right? And all of the stuff that you get, you know, you have weird shaped objects, it doesn't matter, you know? You have these things, these things come out, they get different reflections from this, and what the dog gets, or your horse gets, we call an image. In other words, it's not sight. Um, Blind sight doesn't give you sight, doesn't do a thing for the eyes, all right? What it does is it let the brain, lets the brain use evolutionary holdovers, and you may or may not be a person who believes in that, but what the scientists are telling us is that the, that the ability to process sound like this, even in animals that don't echolocate, uh, this is the ones that are researching this, uh, basically say that uh, uh, this is an evolutionary holdover from way back when. Where it comes from, nobody's sure. But it turns out a whole lot of animals have this ability to process this stuff in their head. They just don't have any way of making the sound. So the box makes the sound uh, for them. And so these boxes make the sound and they let the animal do it. And the, the, the ability to echolocate lies kind of dormant, even in humans. There are some people who have learned to do this. 
People ask me all the time, will this work for humans? Yes and no. If you're very young, you might be able to use the dog, uh, uh, not the dog units, but the horse unit, you might be able to use it. The thing is, as humans get older, they lose their high frequency hearing. Dogs do not. Uh, by and large, as dogs get older, they keep the high frequency hearing. There's exceptions to all rules, but basic, basically that's it. That's why you can have a dog that can't understand you when you talk, but it still knows when somebody pulls up in the driveway. It's hearing ultrasound. All right. When you talk, you don't talk in ultrasound. There's virtually no ultrasound comes out of the human mouth. But tires, people's shoes on the pavement, you get ultrasound and the dog will know what's going on. So we're, take, we're simply taking advantage of that. So what we have is the blind sight is equals, it's a sonar transmitter. And also you'll hear the term, if you look at, into sonar, you're going to hear the term sonar emitter. Sometimes I'll call it a sonar emitter. A sonar emitter and a sonar transmitter the same thing okay there are a couple caveats a couple things you, that you need to know for your dog to use this okay first off what your dog uh, needs to have it needs to have normal or close to normal high frequency hearing now this is for dogs okay that, 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 that this is high frequency hearing ref referring to ultrasound, which by the way, you can test with a dog whistle. Um, so even if your dog seems deaf, if it can hear things like cars driving up and stuff and reacts to that, it probably still has good ultrasonic hearing. You can test this with a dog whistle, okay? And uh, so you have to have normal hearing. That's uh, that normal high frequency hearing. For horses, it's just normal hearing, okay? Uh, or, or pretty close to normal. We can We can... And the horse unit, we can make up for a little lack of hearing. Same thing with the large dog unit, the small dog uh, unit now. Now, um, the other thing you can't have is, is this. Whoops. Sorry. Cognitive disorders. This includes um, uh, age-related dementia, okay, with the called senile dementia. Um, strokes of a dog's had a bunch of strokes, and it doesn't seem to be its old self anymore. It may lack the ability anymore to process sonar signals. It's a little bit like in people where if you have a stroke or something and you no longer have uh, what they call fine motor skills, you have trouble holding things, the same thing can happen with the hearing and this will prevent the, the animal being able to use it. So cognitive disorders, all right, and we look at this with age. Uh, we have, I have to say, we've had quite a few people who've ordered the blind sight units with dogs that were, let's say, over 12 years old, some of which were fine, but we've had a lot of them order them who I think they knew that their dog had cognitive problems, but they just wanted to try it. And you can do that. We charge a $25 uh, restocking fee out to 45 days. So if you want to try it, you can try it. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you have a dog that's a very advanced age, and I know that how old they live varies from breed to breed, but if you have a dog that's very advanced age and it just ain't his old self anymore, it may be that, his, that he has cognitive problems that will prevent him from using the unit, okay? And uh, there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. The, the ears only receive the stuff. The brain does all the processing. I will give you some, um, for people who still don't quite get it, um, I will give you some, a little bit of uh, information, a hope, whatever, for people who aren't, aren't sure. Or maybe they have a younger dog, a three-year-old, and they didn't quite get the first part of this. Um, it has been discovered recently that people, animals, whatever, they think this holds for everything. If, if you try to echolocate and you're an animal who doesn't, in other words, you're a human, a dog, a, 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 a horse, a pig, a, you know, a chicken, whatever. Um, what happens when you try to, to, to echolocate, what you're, you're trying to form an image in your mind. You're listening to what you hear and trying to see what that means out here. What they found is that the processing for this very quickly moves to from in the brain to where the ear is processed in the brain to this part of the brain. And this is the $10 ticket right here. 
This is where visual information is processed. We used to think it was only visual information from the, from the eyes. As it turns out now, any time, you know, you put a person in you with know, I don't know, put PET scans or MRIs on them or something, any time you start trying to do an image, this is where the brain tries to do the, the processing. So if an animal's blinded and is really not using this uh, uh, very much, maybe, in some ways, it, as soon as they start using their ears and you're trying to hear where they are and everything, they're switching processing here. So if you, if you have the processing power of the visual cortex, which can process immense amounts of data and very complex data, and, and you have that signal. Can you see this down here? Is it too far down? No. Okay. And you have a, a, a complex signal. Now, when I say complex, please understand this. Anybody wants to try building your own or something like this? If the signal is overly complex, it's only going to confuse the animal, and you get so many reflections, it's impossible to make sense out of it. So I'm going to give away this much. Making a good pulse for echolocation, you need one primary pulse, and then anything else is added to that. If you just try to send out a mishy-mashy whatever, that won't work. They, now, they have had some uh, limited success using actually using white noise, which in a way you shouldn't think would work. But that would be like the noise in radio stations, in between radio stations and radio like that. It just shows how little we actually know about how this works. I can tell you the blind sight works, uh, and you'll see enough you know, people talking about it on the web, especially in groups like Blind Dog on Facebook. Um, uh, uh, but the finer points of it, I couldn't tell you. Okay, I invented it, and, and we only know so much about hearing. We only know so much about how the brain processes this thing. But that's the main part right there. Um, if you're seeing this on YouTube, go over to, a web, to our website. It's uh, the, um, I think the, the name of the website is there before. If, if not, it's simply J-O-R-D-Y, Canid, C-A-N-I-D. Canid is like canines and everything else, wolves, dogs, whatever. JordyCanid.com and go there. And there's lots of information there. There's lots of user videos, stuff we've been sent, the stuff not ours. Um, there's our instructional videos, lots of pictures, and uh, lots of explanations. There's even a whole page uh, still on there, I haven't moved it yet, that is devoted to how this got invented, what's got the origins, so how, how, how this came about. So, you can, you can order a bland site from the website or by phone, all right? On our website, it's just normal retail sales at normal price, whatever the price is at the moment. Uh, for the next, I think it's three, four, five days, we still have the original sale from when we opened the company at 25% off. October 15th, that will be over. That tells you when we're shooting this. Um, uh, uh, but if you are qualified for any other price, or besides just wanting to ask questions, uh, order by phone. By phone, there is special... Um, programs that have some discounts for service animals and we're talking about dogs and there are some service horses um, therapy uh, dogs and horses or if you're a rescue organization then you want to do this also um, for people who are on SSI uh, or otherwise fixed incomes we have no problem at all doing it doing installments so if you want to do, if, if, you, if any of these are an issue for you, you need installments or you're any of these, um, then you need to call by phone and uh, Kathy will, will take care of you uh, and we'll, we'll take care of that. Anyway, thank you very much.